how many of you have heard this tip before? If you have like greasy or oily hair, you can train your scalp to produce less oil by decreasing your frequency of shampoo. Because when you shampoo, you strip your sebum and your natural oils and that triggers your scalp to produce more sebum and you get into this vicious cycle of overproduction. In my last video that I published, I actually talked about this, but I thought that it was so important because it's just such a common tip that I see on every channel that I want to pull that clip from the last video and just make an entire video on that specific thing. So is that tip actually true or false? Can you train your scalp to produce less oil? Let's get into it. So the answer to this is it's actually kind of both. It's kind of true and it's kind of false. So the reason it's so nuanced is because there are several factors that affect oil production in your scalp, right? It's not only shampoo frequency. It is true that shampoo frequency is one of many different factors that affect oil production, but it may not be the one like impacting it the most, right? So if we were to make a list of all of the variables that affect sebum production from your scalp and then weigh them based on the ones that most affected sebum production and the ones that least affected sebum production, the frequency of shampooing would probably be at the bottom. So here's a list of things that affect sebum production in your scalp. We'll kind of go from most impact to least impactful, right? So at the very top of the list, we have genetics, right? So even if you change your shampoo frequency, if you have genetically overactive sebaceous glands, the difference is going to be negligible at best. Now, some men have overactive sebaceous glands and they need to fight that. And if you wanna learn more about that, I actually made a video on how to fight oily and greasy hair link to it in the description. All right, so the next on the list is diet. So there's a 2009 paper from the Journal of Dermatology and Endocrinology that showed sebum production increases in like Western diets that are high in refined sugars, processed carbs, Western diets have a higher ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. The paper also showed that sebum production is shown to change based on whether you're eating in a calorie deficit or a calorie surplus. So a diet high in omega-3s, which is found in like fish or eating low glycemic foods, like fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, this had lower inflammatory markers for acne and oily skin. So if you wanna decrease a lot of that sebum production, then put away the refined carbs, put away the high fatty foods, like mainly omega-6s, or just reduce the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3s. So eat more fish, eat more avocados, eat more nuts, things like that. Okay, so next we have your hormones. And this is a little different from genetics because as your hormones change, your sebaceous glands can change as well. So if you think about like a teenager going through puberty, they tend to get more breakouts and more acne than an adult, right? So without getting really Science in addition to sebaceous glands, you also have androgen receptors inside of your pores. And these are actually the areas that play the biggest role in hair loss in men prone to male pattern baldness, right? They have a genetic disposition to DHT sensitivity, which DHT is a byproduct of testosterone, which is converted into DHT by the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So in someone with male pattern baldness, you know, your DHT will build up. Nature decided that you were someone whose hair follicles are sensitive to DHT, and it it starts to miniaturize that follicle until it eventually dies. And this is essentially what happens in male pattern baldness. That's a different topic for a different video, but I was just using that as an example to explain that hair follicles have sebaceous glands and they also have androgen receptors within those pores. So when it comes to sebum production, the sebocytes can influence the androgen receptors and vice versa, right? They can talk to each other to some degree. Now, to what degree they communicate and what degree they trigger, you know, more or less oil production is way too complex of a topic to explain in this video. But what you do need to know is that hormones also play a role in sebum production. So next we have the weather. When it's hot or it's humid, your sebaceous glands work in tandem with the sweat glands, right? So what essentially happens is you sweat water and electrolytes through your eccrine sweat glands, which are next to your sebaceous glands, and then you secrete sebum as well, which mixes with the sweat to slow the rate of evaporation to help you stay cooler for longer. So this is why when it's hot, when it's humid out, 
your hair tends to get oilier, it tends to get greasier. And then finally, we have shampoo frequency. So this does play a small role in sebum production as the more often you strip sebum from your scalp, the more your scalp needs to produce to protect your hair. So if you have genetically balanced sebum production, your diet is amazing, the weather isn't crazy humid, then yeah, it's entirely possible to train your scalp to produce less sebum by reducing your shampoo frequency. But this tactic, is not going to defeat genetics, it's not gonna defeat a poor diet, it's not gonna defeat hot and humid weather or your hormones that change as you age and so on and so forth. So this is actually a half truth, but it is a tool that you can try even if it doesn't always work. All right guys, hope you enjoyed that tip. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.